before you go overseas, before you go into a new culture or a new group, you need to understand what culture shock is. Cultural transition is very difficult. And today, I'm going to show you a graph that helps us understand what culture shock is and how we can work through it. I'm Paul, and welcome to my channel. I'm a visual person, and in order for me to understand what I'm going through, sometimes I need to see that. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to draw a diagram for you that will help you to understand what culture shock is and how you can make that transition into the new group, new country, new people that you're going to. Let's start by giving this diagram an axis. We have the Y axis, which is our personal feelings, whether we are happy or whether we are sad. And then this is time. Time in the new culture. At first, what we're seeing here is an adrenaline of new information. When you go into a new culture, your mind is being exposed to so many new things. New sights, new sounds, new languages, new foods, so many new things. So you go into this adrenaline rush, this sense of excitement, novelty, newness. This is where you are right in the beginning. For some people, this might last for one, two weeks. Some people, this might last for six months. It all depends on who you are. Eventually, the novelty of being in a new culture wears out and you start going into a state of depression. And not just talking some people, this happens with almost everybody that goes into a new country. They go from this really high point to down and into the sad zone. And a lot of times this looks like clinical situational depression where you don't feel like leaving the house. You don't feel like you want to go to work. You might not want to go to school. You might not even feel like eating or you might want to eat a lot or you have these cravings to go back to your home culture, to have that juicy hamburger, to have all of that chocolate ice cream. Whatever it is that you find comfort, at this point, your lowest, you are feeling like you're ready to give up, you're ready to go home. So when you're down on this point right here, this is, the, this is the peak of culture shock. This is where you need to make the plan. This is where you need to ask yourself these questions. What is making me uncomfortable here? Why am I feeling sad? Why am I craving the ice cream, the hamburger? Why do I want to go see my brother or sister, my mom or dad? These are very important questions. Maybe you're not feeling secure or safe in the culture. That can drive you from here to here. If you have a traumatic event in a country, it's not this smooth little dip down. It's a straight, you're happy and then boom, all of a sudden you're flat on your face, you're sad, you're frustrated, you're angry. You're way down on the scale. Find a way to feel safe in the country, in that group of people. Perhaps it's relationships. Perhaps that's why you're way down here is you miss your friend. And it's true. You're going into a different country, especially, where they speak a different language, you're not going to find the same level of friendship as you're going to find back in your home. People don't speak your language. And it's really hard to share what is really on your heart, really what's on your mind and what you're feeling. Eventually, if you don't speak the language in a new country, this is going to hit you, especially in the relationship community side of things. This is why I really highlight with people the importance of learning language. Maybe you don't have a job yet. Maybe you don't have a role in the community. You just feel like you're just hanging out there. Well, that's not a good place to be either because while you might hit this low pot point a little bit slower because of that, eventually you're going to hit it and you can think of a hundred reasons why you should be back in your home country. Just saying, you need to find out how you can give back to the community that is around you. Now this is where you have a choice. To stay in the new culture, the new place, or to go home. If you decide to stay through, this is where you need a plan. 
because the next step and the next place in this culture shock is adaptation. Finding out what's going wrong inside of your mind, what's going wrong inside your body, that's not working out for you. Okay, so you've asked yourself some questions, you've gotten down to the bottom of it, now it's time to make the plan. When you've made the plan, when you figured out what's missing in your life, then you start working back to the adaptation and integration. That is the eventual goal of this whole entire culture shock experience, to become an integral member of the community, the group that you're trying to join. Up here, you're excited about it. There's lots of new things. You think you're doing well. Bam, your body, your psychology thinks it's not doing well. Then you make a plan, and little by little by little, you start actually integrating as a whole person into the society, into the group that you're trying to join. That is the traditional culture shock map. I know it does look different to a lot of people, and it really depends on who you are and the experiences that you're going through. So there it is, that's culture shock. Are you living in a different country? Are you an expat? What was culture shock like for you? Perhaps you're looking at going into a new country. Perhaps you're exploring going into a new group or changing towns. What is it going to look like for you? Who are you as a person? What do you need? Take some time today, think about those things. Be sure to like this video, share it with somebody who needs it, and comment down below with your thoughts and your ideas about culture shock. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day.